Hey guys, Nick Smith here, and today I'm going to show you a few different ways to add grain to your image to get that sort of film look and add back a little bit of detail in case you might over retouch some skin. So the first thing we're going to do is create a duplicate copy of the background layer. We're going to do that by hitting Control J, Command J if you're on Mac, and that just creates a copy that we can work on for this first that we're going to do. Uh, so we're going to go to Filter and then we're gonna to go to noise and then add noise. Now, by default, this will be on uniform and monochromatic will not be checked. I'm not sure about the amount, but I went with 10 just to show you a quick example of why we don't want it that high. So to start, when it's on, not on monochromatic, it's gonna be really uh, colorful noise and it's not gonna look good. Like it's gonna be a lot of greens and magentas and blues and reds and it just it makes it look really ugly so you can automatically improve that just by checking monochrome now that just makes it so all of it is either white or black and there's no in between and if you ever have looked at uh, classic film grains it's the grain is uh, the difference in it is caused by the way they printed with the chemicals onto the or not printed but the way they applied the chemicals to the film and the way that it absorbed the light in different areas and how much got absorbed by the chemicals that were wherever. And that created that sort of grainy look. And if you want something like really rough, like you wanted that really rough grain, you could actually stick with it this high. But typically, if I'm doing this fast one on a duplicate copy, I like a grain at about 2%. And that's like just enough to, if we toggle this preview to kind of add that grain in there. So I'm going to zoom in just a little bit and if we just toggle this on and off, like see it just it's just barely enough to kind of add a little bit of detail. Uh, now, one thing that I like to do is instead of uniform, I like to put Gaussian on because that randomizes where the grain is uniform. Everything is like pretty much evenly applied. When you go to Gaussian, it's randomized where it's going to be placed because when they actually used film and stuff like that, it, every batch of film was printed or of the chemicals were applied differently. I keep saying printed, but that's not correct. But the chemicals were applied differently to each batch of film. So no two rolls or even slides would be the same grain because of just how they were applied. It was it was randomized. So Gaussian is a big part of that as well. You want to set it to that. And if you notice, it does get a little more grain by switching from uniform to Gaussian, but I think it looks good. So let's go ahead and actually kind of navigate around our, or let's hit confirm and let's navigate around our image. And let's kind of see what this has done. So if you look like up in here in the details that are a little out of focus, like this part of the nose and over there and this side of the cheek, if we just toggle this on and off, you can see it brings in that grain and kind of gives it a little more detail and makes it look like it was more in focus or there was less retouching done. And a lot of people like to do this after a retouch just in case they go overboard it kind of soothes it and uh, you know evens it out so let's look at the background transitions here as well it just sort of adds a little bit of a, a extra gradient to it makes it a little more pleasing uh, in a way uh, I don't use grain all the time but every now and then I find it very useful now one thing I tend to notice is it tends to make things look a bit sharper so if we look at the eyes here and we look at the eyelashes and we toggle this on and off it, it just, it, in a way, it kind of brings some more detail into it. Like if you look at like this specific line right here and like up in there, you can notice when I toggle it on, they become a little more pronounced and defined. It, it sort of just makes it sharper, which is strange because by adding grain, you'd think it would kind of muddy the image, but it almost makes it pop a bit more. So that is just the quick way of doing things. Now, if we want to make an adjustable grain layer that's a little more controllable and, in my opinion, has a bit of a better uh, look to it, uh, what we want to do is we want to create a new layer by hitting Control-Alt-Shift-N or Command-Option-Shift-N if you're on Mac. Then we're going to hit Shift-F5 to bring up the fill dialog. Now, contents will probably be set to foreground color, background color, or whatever your last tool was that you used on it, but we're going to select 50% gray for this trick. And now it's just going to be the solid gray. So we want to change it to soft light first. And by changing it to soft light, it just makes it completely invisible. And things that are lighter or darker will show when you use this. Now, I've covered this in my Dodge and Burn tutorial, which I'll put a card for in the upper right hand corner. If you haven't checked that out, I highly recommend it. It's my most popular tutorial. And it's probably the most important technique to what makes my images look the way that they do. 
So now what we want to do is make this a smart object and we're going to go to this uh, menu here and then we're going to come down and hit convert to smart object. And the reason why we want to make this a smart object is so we can make this adjustable. And by making it adjustable, we can either add more or take away after we do it. And any filter you apply to a smart object, you can do this to you can like continue to modify it and make it uh, less or more depending on what you are looking for in that specific image at the time. So say you change your mind uh, midway through an edit or towards the end or whatever, you can change this really easy. So the, we're going to go back up to filter and then we're going to go to noise and then we're going to go to add noise. And this is the exact same step as before. Uh, but if we zoom in, you'll see that it, with these exact settings that we had before, there's less grain showing. So even if we were to go back to uniform and turn monochromatic off, it's still not as much. So let's turn this up to 10. Uh, there's still less grain showing overall. So let's go back to monochromatic because we don't want these colors because it still shows on soft light. But if we go monochromatic, you'll see it's 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 less because it's trying to blend with the soft light. So it looks slightly different to me. It's more organic looking and it looks more like film actually did. Uh, so then we're going to go to Gaussian because I like the randomness. Like I mentioned before, if it's uniform, it's not as random. So typically for this, I'll usually go with a range between two, uh, which for this image, it doesn't actually add too much to it. Uh, between two and eight is usually uh, the highest I will go. And the reason I like that to be about the highest I go is I don't want it to start to get too grainy. Uh, it, it really just depends on your preference. There are some people who would probably go all the way up to like 20 and think that that looks really cool. Uh, if you look at it from afar, it's not so bad, but uh, personally, I, I'm a bit of a pixel peeper as I'm sure you've noticed by the way I zoom into things and stuff. Uh, so I, I think about eight looks good. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and confirm that. And now if we toggle that on and off, actually, I think eight might be too much. So this is where the adjustable part comes in. And under your smart filters here, if we just double click on this noise or add noise, we, it brings up the same dialog and shows ex us exactly where we were. So we can just go ahead and lower this by like two, I think six, six looks really nice, I think. So we can just lower that. And let's toggle it on and off and you can see it kind of adds some detail back into the skin here it sharpens up the eyes like i mentioned which is just still a very strange thing to me that adding noise sharpens things but it, it really does make that difference and then if we go down here to the shoulder this was actually like completely out of focus and there was no details in here by adding that grain it puts a little uh sharpness to it and it makes it look like it was more in focus than it was same with over here in this shoulder if we toggle it off, there's nothing there. It's just completely creamy uh, bokeh. And if we turn it on, it just kind of adds that nice uh, detail to it to make it look a little better. So if we just toggle it on and off from afar, you can't tell too much what's been done to the image, but it does still have an impact. If we look at these areas like in here, if we look at the sharpness and everything like that, it just has that kind of very pleasing effect. And that's it for today's video. Please be sure to leave a like, comment, and subscribe if you aren't already so it's easier for other people to find my videos and learn from me as well. Feel free to share this on Facebook, Reddit, Twitter, any social media you see fit. As long as my work is being shared and people are learning, I'm happy. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time.